In this video, we'll talk about syntactic islands. What are islands? Well, islands are syntactic constructions that do not allow movement out of them. And if you do try to move words out of these islands, then you'll get an ungrammatical string. So there's five different types of islands we'll look at in this video, so let's jump right into it. The first one are WH islands. So here's a grammatical sentence. I wondered who saw what. And I'm telling you that this who saw what is an island. So for instance, we can't pull out the what in the object position because then we'll get an ungrammatical string. What did I wonder who saw? Why is this? Well, this is because this wh who is in the spec cp position. And what does that mean? Well, in order to move out of an embedded clause, a DP has to move through the spec CP position. So when what tries to pass through the spec CP position to move out of the embedded clause, it cannot get into that spec CP position because it is already occupied by the word who. So to kind of draw a little tree, so let's say this is CP, we have who here, what is somewhere all the way down here. It tries to move up to who to get out of the clause, but who is already there, therefore it can't make that movement. So what's happening here in this sentence to make an ungrammatical string is it's skipping that spec CP position and just moving all the way to the top. But WH movement is cyclic, so it does have to go through spec CP in order to create a grammatical sentence. This is why we cannot do the object movement of what in this case. So those are WH islands. Another type of island are the adjunct islands. So here's a nice sentence. Jane is mad because Jeff dated who? And in this case, we don't know who Jeff dated, but Jeff dating someone made Jane mad. So let's move this who out and make a question with it. Who is Jane mad because Jeff dated? Hmm. This doesn't really make any sense. So this doesn't have the same meaning as Jane is mad because Jeff dated who? Instead, who is Jane mad because Jeff dated? It doesn't capture the same meaning. In fact, it sounds pretty ungrammatical. And this doesn't have an explanation like spec CP. It just happens to be the fact that adjuncts are islands. So there's no movement out of adjuncts. And you might be wondering, that's not a very good explanation. But this is just an explanation that supports data. There aren't adjuncts that you can move out of. In fact, adjuncts are very robust. They don't want to be changed too much. So when you do try to do movement out of an adjunct, sentences become ungrammatical and weird, at least in English. So those are adjunct islands. Uh, they usually begin with words like because, or if, or whether, and you can construct many sentences with these. Okay, so that's adjunct islands. The third type are subject islands. So for instance, instead of just saying what tasted good, we could maybe know something about what that is, that subject. So we know it's a part of something, but that part of what tasted good? Well, let's try to move that WH word out. What that part of tasted good? Mm. That's not okay. And this is because when we do this WH movement in subjects, we have to move the whole DP. So what's happening here is we have a TP, we have this DP subject, and we'll have CP at some point up here. And essentially we want to do movement from the DP and the TP to the DP and the CP. So we can move the whole thing. However, we can't just take a part of it inside. So this what is deeply embedded inside the DB, the, inside the, T, the DP. So that part of what? Well, we can't just take this little bit out of it and move it up. We have to move the whole DP. So this is creating the ungrammaticality. This is a subject island. All right, so those are subject islands. I know I'm touching on these very quickly, but I'm just trying to give you a general overview of what these islands are, how they're constructed, and just a quick explanation of why this doesn't work. 
So those are subject islands, adjunct islands, and WH islands. Now we can move on to complex DP islands, and these are slightly more complicated. So for instance, we can have sentences like, what did Mary claim that she read, where the reading of something has moved to the front of the sentence, and we can ask about this. So what did Mary claim that she read? In fact, something important here is that this claim is a verb. So let's compare this with the second sentence. What did Mary make the claim that she read? This doesn't have the same meaning as what did she read? So this what here does not really correspond to this what up here. They don't have the same meaning. And the idea behind this island is that we can't move WH words out of CPs that are inside of DPs. So here in the first sentence, we see a CP just on its own. We can move out of the CP freely because this can move into the spec CP position and then do cyclic movement up. However, for this sentence, what did Mary make the claim that she read? We can move to spec CP pretty easily, but then if we want to move further, we have another phase here. We have this DP that's blocking further movement outside. So we can't take this WH word and move it up to the top of the embedded clause because this is deeply embedded inside of a DP. So there's a CP inside of a DP, and when we have this, we cannot move our WH words out of it, creating a complex DP island. All right. Uh, normally, we probably won't discuss these in a typical syntax one course, specifically the complex DP islands. Uh, but just in case you do encounter them, this is the general explanation that's given. Finally, one of the more intuitive ones, and I think that are at least probably the easiest to understand, are the coordinate structure constraint. And this hmm, is it an island. Eh, it's more of a constraint, but I think it's interesting to include it here anyway. So we can say something like, I ate popcorn and drank what? And that's fine, because we know we ate popcorn, but we're curious about what we drank. So, hmm, if we try to make a sentence out of it, we could say something like, what did I eat and drink? And that's fine, because we're saying, well, I ate something and drank something. So we're taking the object of both of these verbs that are coordinated and pulling it out. What we can't do is we can't pull out just one of the objects. So we can't say, what did I eat popcorn and drink? So why is this? Well, this is a coordinating structure. So this whole thing is a VP. And inside each VP, we have another VP, which is coordinated with AND. So when we turn this into a WH word, if we're going to extract the objects from both, or if we're going to extract the object at all, we have to extract the objects from both. So we have to remove the popcorn and whatever they drank, turn them into WH words, and move them both out. We cannot just move one of them out, otherwise we get something that sounds ungrammatical. What did I eat popcorn and drink? Mm, that's not okay, because we're expecting that what to be the object of both of these VPs that are coordinated together. So that's my little video on islands. I know there weren't too many trees here. I think the trees at this point are kind of self-explanatory. You could draw them on your own. And really just identifying them from sentences and strings is usually a better way to look at these islands. Especially because if you have to draw a full tree for each of these sentences to determine whether it's an island or not, that takes a lot of time when really we can just take a look at the sentence structure and what it's doing. So in this case, we have a coordinating structure. So when we see that one of these objects is removed but not the other, well, we can explain it and say, oh, there's some coordinate structure constraint, and when we don't move both objects, there is a violation. Or for instance, in the complex DP islands, if we just analyze the string of the sentence, we see, oh, there's a CP inside of this DP, therefore we can't move this WH word out. Okay, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them.